Hey, Tommy, how are you doing? Hey, Christina, I'm doing just fine. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's a Saturday, so day off. Uh, I slept quite well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> quite well. <laughs> so it's good. That's always a good thing, yeah. I also managed to sleep quite well last night, which is super nice. Yeah, it's important. Sleeping is important. It is, it is. <laughs> yeah, but uh, do you remember when we met the first time? Hmm. This is a hard question because it's a it's a while and uh... it's been a while. Yeah, that I can agree. It's a tricky question actually, but I can remember where we saw last time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, if I'm not totally mistaken, it was uh, not. Uh, it was last year's Tuska, right? Yes, uh, the, the, I yeah. was leaving from uh, from the last day. It was the Sunday. Yeah. And I think there was oh, still yeah. someone someone who was going to play, yeah. maybe Villevalo. And yeah, uh, so. we were decided to leave before everybody. <laughs> so it will be more easy yeah. to to walk away. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, we saw just at the at the entrance area. Yeah. Kind yeah. Of. And you gave me the uh the sticker of metal know, the, pizza. The sticker of the metal pizza. Talk show yeah. and, was, oh, and okay, we, cool. we were like talking about uh, you coming oh, as yeah. guest but then you told me that there was a secret project uh, that was uh, still a bit unsure uh, what what was going to happen so if we are going yeah. to wait and we wait and it was good yeah. to wait yeah <laughs> it was good to wait <laughs> yeah. yeah but i yeah. i that remind you sure. yeah i remind you the first time because i remember when when it was um, yeah. It was in it? Ljubljana. Uh, you played with Migraine. Oh. And uh, it was after the gig. It was in... Um, uh... Was it in some of the bars? It was this complex with lots of bars. Yeah, this a bit uh, weird with all the murales. What's the name of that place? Now it came in really my mind. The Kino Shiska, but it's not that. It's... Yeah. Uh... Oh, damn. I don't remember the name of the place. At this moment, yeah, yeah. But uh, after the gig, I remember that uh, I was looking for uh, the drummer from another Finnish band that uh, is a friend of mine, and yeah. uh, I I was like I cannot find him. And then since I had to wait for the bus to get back to Italy in the, in the phone in the morning, okay. I was like, yeah, let's say hi at least. And uh, then I saw you and. Uh, few other guys uh, from migraine and i was hey yeah. do you know where uh, this guy is and uh, you answered me for sure in the gay disco because everybody is there so oh, yeah. what i did i went to the gay disco and it was very cheap i think it was two euros the entrance and yeah. then uh, there was the beer and remember i was buying a beer and uh, you came to buy the a beer uh, next to me but uh, you had no um, money you had just the card and they just got cash they did an accept card right yeah, okay. Yeah. okay yeah and then i was do you do you want that i buy for you and you are now it doesn't you doesn't need but i remember it was a it was a crazy night in that uh, disc it was crazy <laughs> it, yeah, was, uh, it was i i, I, I yeah. can say that my friend he was doing a striptease and uh, all three yeah bands uh, finish all three you were finished band there i'm not mentioning everybody that <laughs> if you know you know <laughs> and, <laughs> and i know yeah. Yeah. he was doing and, and the striptease and everybody were getting crazy uh, yeah it, it was fun it was fun. <laughs> but that, it was, that, really that was fun. A... It was it's such a funny memories actually it was like yeah. a, 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 one of the funniest memories from that exact tour and uh yeah yeah i totally remember that i just don't remember the meeting at the bar desk that yeah was just <laughs> like, you know, we didn't talk that much and, yeah yeah, back then, yeah, so. yeah but okay good to know so that yeah. was the time we met yeah. and so the this one yeah. was a fun fact i think it was oh, yeah. 2011 it was, yeah, 2011, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometime it was like November, maybe, October, November, something like this. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was a... The, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was, it was November. I actually, yeah, <laughs> I remember one accident from that 
um, that exact occasion. Uh, I did drop my phone and I kind of lost it and people were dancing around the you know, dance floor. And you know, while they were dancing, they were kicking the phone further and further away. I was like, I was like, uh, you know, I was scrolling on the floor to catch my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it was just going further and further, you know, crawling there and trying to hunt my phone ass up in the air. I was like, oh, this is so bad. But yeah. And then I saw someone on the platform dancing and stripping. And I don't mention any names, but who knows? The, we yeah. know. <laughs> we know who he was. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It was funny. It was yeah. Funny. It was that kind of uh, weird night. But yeah. Yeah. Good memories, but uh, let's get Good to memories. serious things. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Cron Shift, uh, the, the, this new band, uh, this new project, uh, uh, you released three singles so far, and uh, the last My Prison yeah. was released uh, this this week, a few days ago. Oh, yeah, three days ago, yeah. yeah. And uh, the your first album is coming out on the uh, 10th of May. Yes. So, what can you tell about the album and uh, the songs? Uh... Well, what could I tell? It's an awesome album for sure. And none of us have, have actually done that much work for an album this far in, in our lives. Um, it's a great album. It's quite diverse. Actually, there's many styles combined together seamlessly. So, but um, but this far, what you have heard, the three singles that you know, you can tell that they are definitely each and every one of them are kind of different styles, or they combine some same similar styles and vibes as well. But each of the songs have a different kind of vibe, like the main vibe. So it's gonna be yeah, there's gonna be some energetic stuff and really like in your face stuff and some proggy stuff as well. And uh, also these more atmospheric parts. So it's going to be a great album. There's lots, there's like lots to handle and digest when you hear it for the first time. But yeah. I guess uh, I, I'm sure it's going to be re rewarding for the listeners. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. And what about the lyrics? Are you the one behind the lyrics or it's a group work? Well, well, um, Mainly we have kind of like a John the lyric split with Daniel. So uh, have, uh, like some of the songs are mainly from from him and some are from my pen. So and in some of the songs we're kind of like divide or, you know, we, we contributed, it, both of us contributed in uh, writing the lyrics. So it's kind of like 60-50 if you can say so. so yeah. Okay, nice. And well, if I can tell something about the lyrical theme of the album, it's... Um, because it's uh, quite usually it's something people want to hear. So, yeah, in a nutshell, basically, it's about one's journey from hell to the light, basically, uh, figuratively speaking. So uh, it, it it's like the uh, journey from you know setting yourself free from the constraints of past trauma, lies, deceit, norms, and ego. And finding the truth and finding a, a higher way of being, if you can say so. So yeah, that's the main main theme of the album. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And uh, if I remember well, there are eight tracks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. do you have a favorite one? Hmm. It's a tricky question again. <laughs> <laughs> there's like oh it's so hard to pick one from them one of the eight uh all the tracks are awesome and they're so different from each other but oh well if i would have to choose only one or two maybe i would choose the uh, album opening track which is going to be uh titled stellar halo and maybe the second one could be a world beyond reach which is actually my presentation video for the for that song before we released it so yeah yeah those two yeah. but the whole album is just awesome and so it's kind of hard to pick your favorite and it's changing you know with the time and sometimes you like this one and then the other time you like actually this one so it's kind of like a, it's very varying all the time 
Yeah. And uh, uh, about the band, uh, when did you get together? Uh, when did the Crown Shift start? Well, it's kind of a long story. Well, obviously, we guys knew each other from the scene. The scene is rather small. And if you don't live in a barrel, you will see guys from the scene. So we met in uh, different several occasions, basically. Uh, obviously, the guys, uh, Daniel, Yuka, and Heike, they knew each other like way back uh, because they were playing together in Norther. Yes. So, but Norther got disbanded. That even that time, the guys they agreed or said that, well, they're sure that they will do something again together in the future. And now this was this was the time. So, uh, so yeah, it was maybe sometime like a few years ago that we actually decided to do something about the idea, and we gathered up and and had this plan. And of course, uh, Daniel had some some songs already composed during the years. And lots of stuff composed, and uh, we just had to make the decision to do something with them, and like have a plan, and to create this band actually. So, and yeah, I actually um, Daniel was the first guy I knew from the band. We met also on during several occasions, uh, let's say since like two thousand eight or something. But actual time when we got to know each other more properly was maybe like two thousand. 14 or 15 when we met at some occasion and uh, he came to me and asked that hey Tommy would you want to uh, maybe uh, uh, join this uh, project music, m musical project with me and uh, by that time it wasn't yet clear like what is it gonna be but yeah now it's all figured out and it was maybe like only it was between like maybe 2019 uh, 18 19 or 20 when we actually right. decided to do something actually and now we're at this point that yeah. yeah so it's been a while since you kind of start and uh, and now um, and yeah, now you yeah. you had this uh, this moment that you came out uh, to the to the to the people and say hey oh, yeah. we are here and i think that the yeah, people yeah. are loving your your singles that came out so far so yeah. far what i have yeah. read People are oh, really yeah. enjoying, so it's it's great to have a good feedback, and people are waiting for you to to play live. So that's great. Oh yeah, it's great. I mean, so far the response has been like awesome. <laughs> it's like, and it's so heartwarming to to witness it, to see it, and hear it. It's it's amazing. Like it's like a ninety five, like ninety nine percent of the feedback is just great. But obviously, of course, it's always like that. You cannot please everyone because you have to, you know. It's it's art. It's not like everyone's cup of tea, but but it's awesome how much there is good response and like awesome response. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what about the name Crown Shift? Why did yeah. you choose this name? There is any story behind? Well, there kind of is. We had a couple of different options, and we were kind of like you know wondering between those options, and uh, well. We came up with the crown shift because actually it, it's kind of like a, a figuratively it's it's representing the kind of like the end ending of an era and starting of a new era so kind of like we are all in the crossroads if you can say so and uh now it's the time that we can start something totally new together so uh it's kind of like a change of power shift in the power figuratively speaking but uh yeah it kind of it the name kind of talked to us, so okay. it's, yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah, it's a good one. It's easy to remember. So it's easy for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, talking about tour, because you are having your um, first gig uh, in Tavastia on fifteenth of May, and then you straight away go on tour. And you are going to Germany, then back to Finland, if I remember. Then there is France, Hungary, oh, yeah. and other countries. Um, so how do you feel about this? And uh, what the people uh, should expect from your show? Well, I feel pretty pretty fucking amazing about it that we get to go to these all these festivals around the Europe. 
So it's 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 amazing for sure. And uh, well, of course, let's start from the Tavastia, and it's gonna be the first one that where we gonna you know kick off this thing. So it's it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, holding lots of uh, uh, different kind of feelings and emotions and uh, lots of like uh, you know lots of uh, how would I how would I say expectations, I guess. So, yeah. So it's 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 for sure it's exciting. And well, then we're gonna kick it off and uh, we're gonna go to Europe. Actually, just two days after that, we're gonna be having our first uh, festival gig outside Finland, which is gonna be in Germany, yeah. opener on Berg, yeah, 17th of May. So it's awesome. We get to see like Spain, um, Hungary, Romania, Germany, France, and so on. So it's it's totally yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a good it's a good start. And it's a really good start. Yeah. Are you planning any tour for uh after summer um for sure for sure yeah yeah uh, there's been some plans and there are some plans but so far it's nothing that we can uh, we can yeah it's say, not set down yet so you cannot yeah yeah yeah, say yeah there's like plenty of plans and for the upcoming fall and also the spring after and and even already for the next summer like uh, 2025 but it's still something that we cannot speak out loud so yeah let's see what happens yeah so everybody needs just to calm down as, and wait oh, yeah oh yeah <laughs> that some news <laughs> will come at some yeah. point <laughs> yeah yeah the painful long wait <laughs> so yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. yeah but let's talk also about uh, your other band migraine yeah. uh so What's going on with the band? Uh, because last album was released in 2020, if I remember well. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I think you played last time in 2022. Am I right? Or I'm wrong? I can remember, if I can recall right, it was 22 summer in June. It was this Metal Horizon Festival in Helsinki. I guess that was the last gig. So yeah. Far. So yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's been kind of like uh, we having some downtime uh, with migraine, uh, though migraine is still active and making new music, but it's still uh, having some uh, some of that, you know, not not like a hiatus because we're doing something in the background, but you know, it's yeah. it, still active and uh, we have some plans of doing something, but yeah, yeah. It's still something that we cannot speak out loud, but it's definitely active, yeah. Yeah, of, but yeah. obviously, of course, because ground shift is taking lots of time right now. We're lo just launching the band, and things are just coming, and things are starting. So it's gonna take its own time. And yeah, yeah. so so it's it's not easy to to work in more than one band. I know that most of musicians, at least in Finland, uh, are yeah. working with different bands, but it's 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 not yeah. easy. Sometimes it's it's tricky. You have just to. It's a bit like Tetris, so you have just to, to yeah. try to find the right spot for everything. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. That's well said, Tetris. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it's like a schedule-wise Tetris in a way, and uh, logistics and schedule Tetris. So yeah, definitely. And 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 in addition to that, you might have a day job, and you might have like family and so on. At least many of us have. So yeah, I mean, like uh, like um. In general so, yeah. yeah 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 that's yeah. that's true it's not easy but it's not yeah, impossible yeah. Every, everything is possible but it's everything hard work oh yeah it's hard work and you you just have to have that dedication yeah yeah true to make it happen yeah. yeah and there was a question on instagram for you about migraine of the time with migraine and here it's uh, a yeah. bear wise man that uh, that uh, wrote. Yeah. I'm in interested in the story of how migraine uh, disband disbanded and got back together. I had thought uh, he had had to quit for medical reason, and I remember that you had some yeah. earring problem, if I yeah, remember yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's actually it, it's something that people have been asking during the times. Uh, yeah, it's true that I have a loss of hearing. I mean, decrease of hearing. So, so it, it yeah, that is true. Uh, but 
it's not like something that is preventing you to do music. You just have to be clever. You just have to protect your hearing, obviously. And um, we have all the in-ear in monitor systems and it's blocking the noise from the, and you can adjust the volume right for your ears and for your taste. So it's like nothing you can actually, I mean, it's, it's not something that is preventing you from doing music, but you just have to be kind of like a wise yes. Yeah, yeah, and protect yourself, yeah. But it was the time, yeah, it was those news and it was kind of like, yeah, there was something that, yeah, it's the end of my musical career. It was maybe a little bit, you know, it kind of escalated that way. I mean, the news were kind of like, yeah, only exaggerating maybe. So yeah. uh, I had to do some explaining afterwards when we did the comeback with my brain. I was like, okay, yeah, well, well, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like deaf. I can hear, I can do music. It's not preventing me, but I just have to be more cautious with it. Yeah. Yeah. Was the doctor that uh, at the time told you that uh, you cannot do this anymore or was like uh, you, that you, you got scared about it and you were like, uh, thing oh, over overthinking. Well, uh yeah well basically yeah the doctor said that it's good to at least to you know just to like uh, just slow down with the music maybe or something like or or just you know be more cautious with it you know and uh but well basically i, I guess it was more to my decision that what do i want to do and so on so yeah yeah but it was a uh, of course uh, when i heard it i was like uh, a little bit in a shock because I had been I had been doing music for like you know almost like 20 years and that wasn't even the reason for it, it was, I was working at the airport and there's lots of like noise so a uh, noise peaks and it's actually from there when it got initiated so yeah, yeah the, uh, the decrease in the hearing so uh, it's kind of like a ironic in a way yeah yeah but yeah yeah but it's it's something I can handle and uh, it's yeah. just my decision that yeah I will carry on making music and you know continuing something that is important and you know dear to me yeah, yeah. may I ask you about this uh, your your condition uh is uh, yeah. like just a uh, uh, earring loss or uh, there are also like um, some uh, vertigo how, how we uh, yeah vertigo or things like this um sorry i i, I, I was some... trying to 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 thinking about the the name that is not a, a, a profession a yeah. professional in a professional way <laughs> to say to say <laughs> yeah. so i i'm 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 thinking about the word in english how it is i will say in finnish if do you have ui mouse okay. Also, ah, oh, you mean that? No, I it's guess just the 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 hearing loss. Yeah, yeah, the, it's just a yeah, the decrease in the hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't have that kind of like a. What's the word in English, by the way? Sure. Yeah, like I don't a, know. I will a, say vertigo. Then, if people can understand well, if not. yeah, 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 maybe dizziness or something this, like dizziness this. is a, is a, is the right yeah. word. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no dizziness whatsoever. At least I haven't noticed. <laughs> okay, that's that's yeah. great. That's great. Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah, but it's something you can live with. It's just like you know, sometimes when there's lots of background noise coming, and for example, you're in a restaurant and you're talking with people, then it kind of you know they're talking, uh, you know, they sound frequency kind of like get gets mixed with the background noises, and then it's kind of hard to hard to. Um, Get what this what the other is saying you, you sometimes you just have to focus too much yeah, on the hearing yeah. what's being said even if there wouldn't be the background noise you could hear it like properly but yeah it's just yeah. like mixing with that one sometimes yeah. okay yeah. but good that you are able to 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 oh yeah be yeah. back on track and uh, doing what you love because that's important and you are a great singer yeah. so that's yeah that's nice. yeah yeah <laughs> Definitely. And it was funny, just exactly during this question, there was some noise coming from the background. I was like, what? Sorry, what did you say? That's a weird thing that happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a noise peak. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 But uh, right. let's uh, get on uh, 
on the metal part, metal in general. So uh, yeah. how did you get how did you get into metal? Well, there's a funny story to it actually. Um I was a kid and uh, there was a little bit of like uh leading from someone's side that uh you know it, maybe it was my father, maybe it was my grandfather, my mother. Uh well I got tickets to a Judas Priest concert in in uh yeah, Holly in Helsinki. It was like maybe 91 or something. I was 10 years old, approximately. And uh, well, I didn't know what Judas Priest is. Well, I got the tickets and I also got to see cassettes. It was Turbo and Painkiller. And I got also the Sony Walkman, you know, headphones. And I blasted those two cassettes for the whole night. I couldn't even sleep. I was so excited. And well, I guess that was the actual actual point when it, when I got like truly into metal of course obviously i had been listening to something already before that but that was the that was it and it's a good the story moment. in a way as well and i went to the gig judas priest concert it was amazing and the op opener was pantera so pantera was warming up for judas priest well there was a third band as well i'm not sure can't recall what was it but so pantera was the second band they were opening for warming for judas priest and I was like, whoa, what is this band? I didn't even know. And there was like Phil, Phil Anselmo with the, you know, Mohawk, with the long hair Mohawk yeah. and on scar tattoo on the on the stomach. I was like, whoa, this this guy is so cool and everything. And uh, so, yeah, I was like, uh, I was I was uh, just a small kid. I was 10 years old and I was in the front row. My mom was like uh, protecting me in the front row and holding her hands like uh, around me, you know, and there yeah. was a fence and they were like, you know, these big guys just moshing and, you know, <laughs> crazying around it. It was it was really it was really cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Because that was the that was the ultimate point where I got into metal. Yeah. 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 I think that you had a great start. <laughs> Not everybody yeah. at ten years old go to see such a great bands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so lucky yeah. you. Other guys went to see Raptor or something like this. I mean, and Raptor is also quite good, but it's different different genre yeah, sure. yeah yeah and um uh, what was the first album metal album that you bought or that you own that i bought well those two were the ones i got as a christmas present but i don't know maybe that i bought for my own money later on maybe can't recall that maybe it was some metallica's album not sure but the first Metallica album for me was the Black Album. It was great. And then I got, you, you know, to study Metallica like uh, afterwards, like, you know, going to the previous albums and so on. But yeah, yeah. and actually got, I got into Metallica. It was, uh, I saw them at the Freddie Mercury's, uh, you know, this memory concert uh, from television. And I was like, oh, what is this? And I you know, didn't know them before that. So yeah. I like, then I really got into Metallica. So I, I guess it might have been Metallica's album that I actually bought. Okay. The first, yeah, among yeah. the first albums that I bought, oh, yeah. And uh, do you have uh, a favorite album? I mean, uh, it's dif dif difficult to to choose just one because there are so many great albums. Uh, but there is yeah. an album that it's important for you somehow. Well, definitely, I would say, like my all-time favorite, at least one of them is. Judas Priest's uh, painkiller so it's it's like forever classic for me it's ne there's no time I couldn't I, I don't have I wouldn't have the vibe for listening to it so it's an amazing album and actually one that is it's still like just living up to date it's like the one of the best albums for sure for me it's Sepultura's uh, Arise yeah it was also the time first I got into Maybe it was so that first I got into Judas Priest and then like Metallica and then I went to Sepultura and then I went even further to the more extreme stuff like there was Napalm Death and so on. And yeah, yeah, it just went on like that. And like some years after there was a slower episode or I mean softer episode where I got into punk and like the yeah. skate punk. <laughs> I mean, and then, then after it was like a couple of years and after that, I got back into metal music. So, and forever since on, it's been the metal's been the main genre. Of course, I'm like uh, I 
I listen to different kinds of music and different genres and so on, even from pop, pop and this kind of stuff, even rap sometimes. Yeah, but yeah. I would love the free metal as the genre. It's my favorite yeah. genre. So, yeah, you know. it's the number one. And then it's yeah, important, yeah. And, of and course. So like, to... Sorry. Yeah, that uh, then it's important, of course, to listen a bit of everything and everything that sounds good yeah. to to us because uh, we are all uh, individuals uh, that have different taste and uh, that yeah yeah you know yeah obviously and I think that if you listen to different kind of uh, musical genres it it gives you more perspective and you get some ideas even different kinds of music to put into the stuff that you're making and obviously there's like a plenty of different genres within like metal music as well yeah and subgenres of subgenres and so on so so I, I think it's definitely rich if you if you if you if you listen to different kinds of music then then you have different kinds of ideas and you don't look at so narrow the ideas are as, as narrow as they could be if you only listen to metal music right. for, for instance uh, there is uh, any particular band or album that you are listening uh, in the, in the recent time yeah, there is for sure. I, I, actually, lately I've been listening to um, uh, from well metal music, but it's like a, a totally different kinds of bands. Uh, I've been listening to lots of the you know Bola. Yeah. How is it pronounced Bola? From I guess they're from UK or something. And also oh, also yeah. Sleep Talk. I'm not sure actually, but, or is it Danish band or I don't know. I want have to, to check that out. that out definitely but it's really awesome band really awesome yeah. music it's more progier stuff but i like the atmosphere that they have and um also i've been listening to lots of uh, sleep talk yeah and sleep talking to me it's really awesome that it's something totally different and you can you can put it to the met metal genre and they have more like metallic songs but also they have kind of like really froggy songs and even poppy songs it's really it's really, really awesome band. So diverse, yeah. and they have this mysticness behind them. They wear the masks, and there's something just behind. Yeah. So something yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. And well, to the other end, then I'm also I've been listening lately something like uh, Ingested and Spite, and uh, you know, it's just really extreme hardcore metal yeah. stuff that is. Feel like in the in a more hardcore scene, uh, end of the metal and brutal and technical and this kind. Of, so I can like sometimes I'm listening to this progier stuff. And some, sometimes I'm just listening to this yeah. really brutal and extreme stuff. Yeah, and, and sometimes uh, I'm listening to pop music as well. Yeah, and when it comes to music outside of metal, uh, yeah, do you have a guilty pleasure song? You know, that song that when you start, you can just not keep yourself. You have just to let it go. Oh, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> just, just wondered if the visioning is like, well, I, it's kind of hard to say. Mm. Is there something like this? Obviously, there are different things that I'm, you know, enjoying when I hear. But it's not like something that I like uh, maybe actively put on and listen but if, if i hear the song I'm, oh this is so cool and uh, i don't know maybe some 80s stuff you know like maniac yeah. <laughs> or something in, the, in that in that vein in a way but yeah it's hard to say but i i really enjoy listening to queen quite often i don't have their albums that i listen to them from spotify or watch the youtube videos so it's, it's really but the American was one of the best singers. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. 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 What's your opinion as a musician? Uh, what's your opinion on Spotify? Well, I guess it's contradictory for lots of people. And uh, I don't know that much about the earning system within Spotify. But, well, it's the main platform to listen to. Uh, Although there are different platforms, but it's main one, the most popular ones that we, that we, most of us listen from, and obviously something where we put more efforts to also, you know, advertise music, where to listen to our music. So 
because it's the biggest, I guess. So it has to, you know, I guess it has two sides of the coin. But I don't, I don't have that exact opinion about it because I haven't, I haven't dug into, yeah. you know, the uh, system or you know the earning system within Spotify. I just heard something about it, and yeah, maybe it's that way, but I don't mind. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are uh, some people that are uh, strongly disagree how Spotify works. I must say that uh, yeah, I don't know really how it works. I I mm. have Spotify Premium because I yeah I like to listen when I'm when I'm biking or when I'm on the bus. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's easy to have always with you, and I like to listen to a yeah. bit of everything. Of course, metal is the is the top, but then there are some you know some guilty pleasure songs coming here and there, <laughs> and something yeah. from you know when when I was a kid. So yeah, but yeah. It's it's a good it's a good mix. If someone, I always think, well, what a person would yeah. think. Watching to yeah, yeah. out my uh, liked song on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> if you share your, if your Spotify is like public, yeah, it's can, it's a bit yeah. uh yeah, a bit extreme metal, and then uh, there is a uh, Backstreet Boys. Oh, well, that's that's totally okay. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, it's like yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah it it can be from totally different ends of yeah. the musical spectrum yeah yeah for me i personally i listen from spotify i have a premium as well and uh yeah i blast different kinds of stuff sometimes when you, you know for example you have to listen to your own music because you have to rehearse your gig set for example and then you're like thinking like did i have this my you know spotify was it like private or was it public and like people are might be watching like what the hell he's just listening to his own music like <laughs> what's wrong with this dude <laughs> but but obviously you have to listen to them somewhere and it's so practical because you can put on play everywhere and you can put the songs in the exact big set order for example yeah so uh yeah uh, i remember I think I have... someone uh... Uh, you know, because the before the end of the year, there is also this uh, Spotify uh, yeah. wrap. Yeah, the and, uh, recap of the year. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, the, there are some guy that put on the on Instagram <laughs> stories. Uh, yeah, it looks like I'm listening <laughs> listening only to my music. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 because it's the best. It it makes sense. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of funny. It, it might look a bit stupid. Yeah, for sure. That you're just listening to your own music, at least like mostly. And uh, yeah, because, well, why not? It's the best music ever. Well, you know, <laughs> but, or yes. But yeah, obviously you have to practice or rehearse somewhere. And uh, it's good to listen from there. So, uh, and I was just beginning to think that do I have it private? I, I guess it's private. I'm not. I'm not ever sharing, you know, these recaps of the year, so on the wrap of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Things, so it, <laughs> I don't have to risk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, when it comes to singing, when did you start mm. to sing? Mm. Uh, it was sometime in elementary school. Uh, my My classmates... Uh, they formed a band or they already had formed a band and they were searching for a singer and actually I was playing a guitar first I wanted to be a guitarist and I, I got even an electric guitar as a, like, a birthday gift or a Christmas gift and stuff like this and I, I was really into the guitar playing but then they asked me to join the band as a singer so uh, I don't know Okay, well, I can try. And well, that was where it started from. We were just playing covers like Guns N' Roses and some Metallica and stuff like this. And we were like in sixth or seventh grade. So it started from pretty early ages, but obviously it wasn't like something I did. You, you did like systematically rehearse or practice to be a good singer or be better singer. I guess it started for me maybe sometime during the migraine era that first you just you would just you know like you just you just enjoyed doing music but you, but 
you didn't give maybe much attention on how to improve yourself as a senior and be better. I think that started sometime in 2010 or 11 on, onwards. And now it's been, of, of course, there's times that you're more active and sometimes you're a little bit passive with it. But yeah, now then the gigs are coming. So it's, it's the active, active phase that you have to really put effort into rehearsing and, you know, going that you're in a good shape vocal wise and otherwise yeah. too like, yeah. what do you do up. before a gig uh, as warm up for your voice oh well there's different techniques obviously there's like uh some um, you know uh, how would i say more like uh, uh techniques like focusing on your body that you're stretching and you know warming up your body that you're feeling like relaxed and everything that there's not you're not stiff or anything that yeah. you're relaxed and that uh, how would i say like uh flexible and so on and then you can do these vocal exercises warming up exercises and do scales with different kind of vocals and uh different sounds well there's lots of stuff you can just <laughs> you can just go and google but i use i use like a few different kinds of techniques for the warm-ups okay uh, and of course, you have to rehearse the songs uh, beforehand quite well. So you know your stamina that you can nail the songs and nail the whole set, basically. It's a lot of like muscle work, basically. And you have to be warm to do yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. And you have to have the right mindset as well. So it's yeah. lots of different things involved. Yeah. And uh, I had something in my mind. Oh, yeah. Uh, what gear do you use? Uh, you mean my microphone or yes. like, uh, yeah. Well, at the moment, I have my uh, my live microphone is Audix, Audix OM5. It's it it's pretty it's been working quite well for me. Mm, but maybe I'm planning also to get a wireless mic, so it, whether it's gonna be Shure or Audix or something else, I don't know yet. But so far, uh, Audix has been really good for me. And uh, well, for like, let's say, like home demoing, I use the Sure, Sure Bates, uh, the SM Bates Seven. That's quite, it's quite popular, and many bands also, many artists also use it as a studio mic, like uh, to nail the actual album with it. But it's quite, quite okay. Not like the high end of the spectrum, but kind of okay option. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. But yeah. let's get to to my jar the jar of random topics oh. let's see what we are getting as topic okay. can be anything i'm taking this one it feels good okay dreams good. Uh, so dreams. yeah uh what are do, do you have uh, dreams for your life mm. yeah there are sometimes something that can represent future or the present or something that related to the past. So there are lots of trees that is focusing on your or related to your life. Yeah, I guess like most, like mainly the trees are about your life. There could be some ra really, really random stuff as well, but usually there's something that there's some some connection key point that is somehow connected to your past or present or even yeah. future. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, uh, there are people that have yeah. those uh, recurrent uh, dreams or nightmares. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, do you have ever had any of? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, dreams are such a strange territory to you know, think about, but mm, yeah, I've had some recurring dreams, uh, both nightmares and just basic dreams as well and i i remember since i was a kid i remember this recurring strange dream this kind of like nightmare because well yeah i remember i was put into this rocket and i was launched into space alone and i was just drifting further and further away in space and i got just anxiety and i was like oh shit i'm in emptiness and i'm totally alone and then it ended and it recurred many times though I haven't seen it for years. 
anymore, but it was something I saw when I was a kid and maybe a teenager. It was, ca it, it was scary. It was scary, yeah, the emptiness, the void, and being alone there. In yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's something else as well. And, uh, well, there's also some sort of dreams that you see uh, people, uh, close people from your life, from the past that are not here anymore, for example. So something like that you can see quite regularly. Actually. Yeah. Then you feel like maybe there's a connection or something. Yeah, yeah. you know, there are people that say that uh, when uh, a person that uh, is not living anymore come to your dreams, uh, there yeah, is always yeah. a, a message that they want you, you to know. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. They want you to know that they're still there. Yeah. you know somewhere yeah. somehow i don't know but yeah who can tell yeah, but we, it, we it, cannot it, know if it, it is like this or <laughs> not but it's it's nice yeah. to think that uh, yeah that yeah yeah you can, they can of still comfort connect with yourself us. yeah yeah for example someone like you love one or uh, something from your family dear family members that's passed already and it's kind of like you can comfort yourself to the idea that it could be that your she is still somewhere there but you know so yeah, yeah, lots of lots of strange stuff happens in dreams. Sometimes it's kind of fun that you can actually pull, pull off some lyrics from that. Sorry, yeah, so yeah. When you see a dream, you're like, oh my god, okay, I have to write this down. And even I've heard a mel melody in a dream, <laughs> and then you're like, okay, okay, I I, I got to put the recorder on, and I, okay, I'm totally still like you know half sleep, and then I try to nail that melody, and next morning I'm like. I'm sure it wasn't like this when I heard it in a <laughs> dream. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, you are the, not the first one that uh, told me about uh, uh, hearing uh, uh, a melody in the dream. Uh, yeah. I remember yeah. I did an interview in 2013, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with uh, Yonsu from Indica. And uh, okay. she, yeah. she, we, we talked about that uh, a dream that she had and there was this melody and she wrote a song yeah. that, that got in the album so it's really interesting okay. <laughs> it's yeah it's interesting for sure and really awesome yeah. that you can have that inspiration from your dreamland yeah you say that you're in the, there's something in your in your system or in your mind that works that way that you can you cannot like actively use it but when you're dreaming it they, stuff comes out and then you can recall them and you can you can pull it off to make a song out of it even. yeah or maybe even a movie if you're uh, in the movie <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but let's get another another topic and let's see what's the yeah. the next one let's All right. we get uh, something that we for the first time it's not um, a topic for the first time but it's a movie so, so do you have a favorite okay. movie? A favorite genre, or uh, let's let's go with favorite genre first. Okay, uh, I would have to say it's totally sci-fi. Okay. Yeah, yeah, science fiction, but not like every kinds of science fiction. It's like something. I just I have a I have a thing for towards the um, like. You no know, ending of the world and finding a solution kind of thing and let's go to space and find something else like and one of my all-time favorite movies is actually interstellar okay yeah yeah it's i didn't even it's like uh i don't know if it's like three hours three and a half hours or something i've been watching like maybe uh, five times <laughs> so it's it's really awesome i just this is something that clicks for me yeah and there is any kind of uh, movies that you don't like that you are like I cannot watch this. Ah uh, well, mm, maybe something like this. You know this uh, this really basic blah blah like romantic dramas. I'm like, okay, there's some good ones as well, but like mainly that's not my genre. I'm like, I, I get so bored. Or you know this kind of this um, romantic comedies. Oh my god, yeah, I, I know. I get it why people like them, but not for me. There even but there are some exceptions, of course. But yeah, like 
Yeah. And but I re- really love horror movies. Yeah. You know, love, when I so think sci fi and horror. Yeah. When I think if someone is going to ask to me what I like, and yeah. if gen- generally I I don't know, I watch to random things. I go with oh yeah. this this looks something that I can watch maybe and I can enjoy also stupid things like comedies yeah. com- comedies are uh, are really fun and then for some reason I'm that kind of dramatic and I like uh, of course dramas when someone is yeah. dying and uh, and everything is yeah. shit. I don't know why yeah. I, I like that kind of stuff but my yeah. big the, the the first thing always the the number one is horror and from the 80s and 90s so that's that's okay thing. So because the, the, the classic yeah yeah let's say that in the 2000s uh, and gone yeah. there is not you know this effect that this uh, scaring thing uh, oh jump scares yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's missing it's missing there is it's too perfect yeah. too polish and i I know what's going to happen, so there is not this. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Effect. And I, I yeah, need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, sometimes I've noticed that there's a lack of building, uh, the tension. So, so it's kind of like um, you know that there's gonna be a jump scare. And, whoa, there is, and uh, and the next jump scare. Then there's someone coming with a mask or whatever, and you know, killing everyone. And it, it it's just so basic, but. Even yeah, there's some exceptions. Some some of them are well done, uh, but usually, so many times they are done so well. It's kind of like too well in a way that it doesn't have the rough edges. I mean, which are making the atmosphere. It's too polished in a way, and uh, I don't know. But I like some modern horror as well. Like for for instance, like uh, Conjuring. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. How I, I was and, thinking. Uh, uh, there was a movie that I have watched on YouTube because it was not yeah. anywhere else, and the name was okay. The Clown, I think. And clown or the Clown? Yeah, it was uh, okay. quite interesting. Uh, I I quite enjoying that. I think. Uh, okay, yeah, it, it and was it wasn't the bad. terrorizer, not the terrorizer, no. right? It was it okay. Was yeah, yeah. Like a, B class movie, I think. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. Sometimes they're really good. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you yeah. need to, to, to watch something that is not the uh, on the big screen. Oh yeah, yeah. Sometimes they're even so much better than the uh you know the so, magnets or yeah. So there there's been some really nasty horror movies that I've been watching and I'm it's like I'm in the brink of can I watch or not as uh, well. I mean, good movies, but really afterwards you feel like totally empty and you're like, oh shit, what did I actually watch? And one of them is Martyrs. Okay. It's, I guess it's a French movie. Uh, it came some time maybe around 2008 or something. Really nasty, really repulsing. And it's you're like, you know, amidst the watching, you're like, can I proceed or not? Okay, I will proceed. And after I remember watching it, I was like just laying on my back on the bed and watching the ceiling. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I felt totally empty and like like so nauseous. But it was a good movie, nonetheless. But I don't know, sometimes you feel like, okay, it's it's too much maybe. So. Yeah. Now I remember a movie from Rob Zombie. Uh, it was in, I went to to the cinema to, to watch it. Yeah. And, so some of the uh, Halloween. Or... It it was the what was the name? The House of uh, Hundred Bodies. I don't know the the name in English. I can remember. Oh, because, uh, yeah. The name was uh, the Italian version. With uh, of of course it was okay. dub- adapted. Um, yeah, yeah. It was, was it one thousand corpses? Uh, yeah, that one. And for me, it was boring. It was like <laughs> okay. I, I I just can't. It's it's. It's too yeah. artistic, maybe for me, and uh, yeah, yeah, and it, too well it done. Was, it was uh, like, uh, no, this this is a this is not for me. I don't remember what year was it. It was two thousand five, yeah. maybe. 
Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I ever watched that one, but I know it for sure. I can't recall it was it like House of Two uh one thousand corpses or bodies or one hundred Yeah, yeah. Maybe corpses like is that. the right one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, could be. So, yeah. I mean I I love some of Rob Zombie's movies, for instance, was it some of I can't recall which one of the Halloweens was it uh, uh, there was some brutalness that I actually liked about it and that there was tension kind of so I just really cool that maybe some of them aren't that good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. not all not all the movies from the same uh, director are are good. Mm. Uh, yeah. For example, if I think about more um, you know, kind of uh, artistic horror movie if I have to choose then I choose uh, all the yeah. way Dario Argento movies um, okay so uh, I I'm always up bad at this them. <laughs> but uh, you have to okay. check to check out some Dario Argento's movie yeah yeah you have to give me a link for it maybe so I will yeah. definitely yeah. check out yeah yeah, yeah. I'm always bad with those names. I, I never know who's the director and so on. And yeah, I'm just yeah. like, okay, I, I, I'm, just, I will I'm just watching it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you will one... say if it's uh, good or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely, I will give a feedback. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing I really love is the Hellraisers, especially yeah. the old ones. Yeah. There's just something about it, the hell box and everything. And, uh, yeah. you know, all these... Cool. Xenobites or what? What are they called? There's so uh, crazy stuff happening, and it it's just it's totally like uh, surreal in a way, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and also brutal. And actually, one movie that for me reminds a bit about Hellraiser is the uh, what was it was this sci-fi movie, uh, even Horizon. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you should really check if you if you like any sci-fi and if you like yeah, horror. Yeah. There's it's like mixture in between, and in the end you will be like, what the hell? <laughs> so it, uh, it totally has that you know Hellraiser vibe, at least in the end of it. It's cool. It's really cool movie. Yeah, yeah, nice. But now it's time to talk about the most important thing in the world, and it's pizza. Pizza, oh, of course. Do you yeah. like pizza? Who doesn't love pizza? Oh, who yeah. doesn't? Yeah, yeah. It, it's like perfect talk show. It's like, who doesn't like pizza? Who doesn't like, who does, who doesn't yeah. like metal? It's like, I love it both. It's yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's true, true. It's the perfect yeah, combination. Yeah. There should oh, yeah, be a pizza yeah. name, Metal Pizza. So yeah, 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 on definitely. every pizzeria <laughs> list, there should be the Metal Pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah, don't know. Definitely. How would it look, the Metal Pizza? Yeah, I guess there would be all the heaviest ingredients, like, you know, like all the heaviest, like salami and pepperoni and different kinds of meats, maybe, but maybe even not different kinds of meat, but, you know, just heavy stuff, like really intense ingredients, like if it's vegetarian, it's very expensive, like yeah. it's all the I, I was thinking also that spices. it needs to be a black pizza, you know. Oh, that could be actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. A pizza painted black. I mean, black, yeah. like, you know, tomato sauce or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or, the you know, the squid ink sauce. So it yeah. could be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that could be awesome. <laughs> Taken from the Italian pasta world to pizza, <laughs> you know, having the black pizza. Yeah. There is something to awesome. think about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Metal yeah. pizza. I want to, to know what people think about or how the, the metal pizza should be. And let's see if yeah, someone's yeah. going to give us uh, some answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If someone's going to invent it, uh, it's yeah. going to be the first metal pizza in the world. Yeah. Or uh, uh, how could I tell if there's already, but. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we don't know. Maybe I should check. Yeah, it. yeah. But uh, do you have a favorite pizza? Mm. What's your favorite pizza? Uh, I cannot really tell what is my favorite pizza. It's like many times I. Just like the quite basic, you know, with pepperoni. Yeah, so the double pepperoni pizza and like, yeah, got stagioni and yeah, and uh, well, like offer special, special and well, it also depends on where you order or where you buy it from. It's a different, different yeah, mix, cool. basically. But yeah, but yeah, I guess double pepperoni is quite a solid yeah. one. 
So yeah, it's basic, but it always tastes good. Yeah, yeah. you cannot fuck it. You yeah. cannot fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, it's a sure one. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. How about you? <laughs> oh, my favorite is uh, margarita plus olives, and if I'm in Italy, okay. I will ask for a stracchino cheese. But in Finland, oh. we cannot have it. Oh. So, so it, <laughs> yeah, it's, fine. Yeah. it's fine just with, but olives needs to be the black ones, bigger ones. Because if oh, you, yeah. Have those, yeah. uh, you know, those are green or those are black, oh, yeah. but, uh, without taste, uh, then it's. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's useless then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. But, and I really like Italian pizzas. I've been mean, like, Maybe a few times in Italy, and uh, I just love. I then I just want to try different kinds of. But maybe, maybe most of the times that I've been having these, hmm, this, this is one with the prosciutto, and there's some uh, mushrooms, and also uh, <clears throat> my throat is itchy. Sorry, <clears throat> I have this thing like uh, recently. There's an itching in the throat. And I get this dry coffee, and then my eye starts to bleed. I'm not crying. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> such a good topic. It's, a, it's so a, moved. something about allergic reaction, <clears throat> maybe because you know it's the yeah. people is over. Yeah. And there is a, maybe some <laughs> because for who doesn't live mm. in London, maybe this <clears throat> makes sense. But there yeah. is some, some, all the. What's what's in a, in English the yakka the, the, the those yeah, small yeah. rocks that they they throw on the on the oh, yeah. during the winter because <clears throat> otherwise it's slippery. Then when the, the, yeah. the ice go away melt off, then the, well, there is a lot there is a lot going on. So uh, oh, yeah. I also oh, yeah. get yeah. Uh, some of the, those um, itching throat and. Uh, uh, I think it's yeah. quite common in this period. It is, I guess, at this time of the year for, yeah, it, it, like there's the the dust from the streets, yeah, basically, yeah. and then mm -hmm. snow and the ice is melting away, so the dust kind of flies to your, yeah, you know, rest of those systems, and you're like, no, oh, maybe that's it, and I'll be like coughing, like I'm being dry cough, and then my eyes are bleeding and then I go to public transport therapy, for example, and then people think of baby. Is that guy like cry? You know, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a moved. <laughs> yeah, it's just a moving moment. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, get, getting back to the pizza, uh, oh, yeah. there is a topic <clears throat> that divides the world in two. So, mm. pineapple on pizza, yes or not? Uh, for me, it's a total yes. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I can understand. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But I can also understand why some people, it's not okay. And it's totally no. But yeah, because it, it, if you think about it, it's usually about the uh, salty flavor. And pineapple has the kind of the sweet flavor yeah. mixed with the saltiness. Some people like it, some people don't. Yeah. For yeah, me, it's, it's totally about yes. taste. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And you basically cannot argue about the taste matters in a yeah. way. But, yeah. but of course, you can, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's always subjective. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. But uh, now it's the moment for the question. So, last guest oh. uh, <clears throat> left this question summer or winter? Uh, summer, definitely. You are Finnish. Yeah. So I knew that your yeah. your answer was summer because all Finnish people answer yeah. always summer. Yeah, yeah. I I guess like ninety percent would say, or at least eighty percent would say summer. Yeah, because it's such a short time here <clears throat> that you see the sunlight and the warmth. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you have a question for the next? Yes. Hmm. Oh yeah. The random tricky question. Oh, would I ask? Okay, it could be a tricky one and quite deep. Actually, but it, I would ask the next one: that what is the meaning of life? Yeah, quite deep. Nice. 
Yeah. yeah. Well. I know it's the hard question. It just came to my mind because someone actually um, forwarded that question to me. It was for like in, interviewed person before me. Like a, I can't remember what interview that was. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice yeah. one. Yeah. Good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we are at the end of this uh, episode of Metal Pizza. So. Thank you yeah. so much for for being my Thank guest. You. It was really nice to chat with you. And oh, yeah. I hope people Definitely. enjoyed it. Uh, would you like to say something to the people that are watching or listening uh, this episode? Oh, yeah. Well, we have the album coming out with Crown Shift, 10th of May. You can free save it or pre-order now. You get some cool merch with it. Or you can win some cool merch with it if you pre-order. Free save for sure. And please support and buy the album. Uh, it means the world to us. And also, come to our gigs. We have the first gig, 15th of May in Tavastia. It's going to be the first gig for us ever. So it's uh, unique, for sure. And the first gig. So, yeah, something you can witness only once, basically. So be there if you can. It's going to be awesome. Great. And remember always to support the bands buying merch and going to the gigs. Because this yeah. is not the band. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Christine. It was a pleasure for me.